Hello. We're back. Vale's on a solo adventure. And you so is that. Caitlin. That and actually, so is. Hmm? Actually, Gil's always in my heart. Aww. Gilwyn is definitely experiencing the heart of someone else right now. So, Caitlin. <laughs> do you actually want to, to. Are you just waiting down there? That's fine to do. You, you aren't going to attract much attention unless something happens above. I am just going to wait down there. Caitlin doesn't really... You also are really carrying Vale's stuff. stuff. Yeah. It'd be a bit rude to leave, right? Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> vale. Did you have... It, hey. It can, it can only get worse if you leave, right? Yeah. <laughs> vale. Yeah. What are you doing? You're standing. So, I imagine you're probably hiding near a door. Nah, I was just like blatantly listening to it. I was like, no one else is out here. That's true. Yeah. You you know the people who are patrolling have just left, so. Gotta gotta listen as good as I can. Mm -hmm. Or I'm gonna die. Well, I'm gonna thieves tools my way in. Sure, again, sleight of hands. But with your thieves tools roll, actually, isn't that how it works? Yeah. There you okay. Go. This door is locked, and you you spend a little time picking the lock. It's not as quiet as you'd expected. In fact, you actually sort of pick the lock, and you hear like a big like something, a mechanism inside the door shifts. I can feel it. Let me just do a quiet roll while it here comes in the air tonight. <laughs> that song is like the best song ever, right? He did the drums for it. So. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Uh, you actually can hear Vale. You don't need to do a perception roll. You actually can hear someone like, is that someone at the door? Like muffled from inside, and then uh, assumedly someone's like, no, no one's at the door because no one comes. But someone definitely did hear you. But okay. I don't know if you continue. Do you continue thieves tooling? You don't need to do another roll, or do you just like yeah, fail? Yeah, yeah. You manage to unlock the door. I don't know whether you were opening it or not, but you, you definitely get, you get that like moment. And you're like, okay, I'm in. Satisfaction. Yes. Um, yeah, next step is... I need to have a look through the keyhole, really. Just yeah. Just sure there's no one in that exact front room. The old pep roll. roll a, you roll a one on your perception. The keyhole has a jabby knife <laughs> hidden within it. It's possible. There we go. My perception. You actually can see down this, uh, down this. It is basically a hallway. Rooms over side. One of them you're assuming is a kitchen. One of them you're assuming is a dining room. And quite clearly, there's actually not a doorway. This goes into a large chamber of many uses. Uh, you know, drawing room, dining room, blah 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 blah. blah. Not dining room. You, your face, your dining room is that way. Office. Whatever, you can actually see a parrot in the cage, sort of in that area, That's but the it's room kind I want, of. Basically. Yeah, yeah. But you, you can see that the hallway's a little longer than you thought, and there's actually one of the servants who's a, a dwarven uh, lass is actually like looking at the door, like, No, I'm sure I heard someone at the door. I'm like, No one at the door, you be quiet. No one's at the door. No one's ever at the door. If they come in through the door, they're not. Like, you can hear uh, this person being berated, and they, they do, like, okay, 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 and just, and just go back to the kitchen. Okay, uh, I want to slip through the door, and then I presume there's somewhere in the hallway I could hide in under on. You could under, hide under, like, one of those uh, side tables. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll just, I'll just roll under one of those for a bit. Just, just wanna watch. Just wanna wait. Give me a, give me a old uh, stealth roll. Your perception's absolutely fine. You can have a little watch and hide, depending on how well you stealth, of course. Okay. Back to rolling three. We'll see. We'll see what's up. Right. <laughs> I've got to hope they get a one. They did not get a one. You roll in here, and business seems to continue as as normal. From here, you can actually see a bit more inside this larger room. And it seems... I mean, there's more than one parrot. And in fact, they're making quite a lot of noise. More noise than they were before. You're gonna... Shut up, you damn beasts! 
You're beautiful, but you're loud. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, actually, right past you, one of the servants. In fact, two of them. It seems there are at least two servants in this building. There might be more. You're not sure. Go past, and one of them's like, "Do you want me to to uh, just send a parrot to sleep, uh, my lord?" Like, no, no. Then I wouldn't be able to see them. No. I want my to lord, see right? Them. Let's look at his boots. <laughs> you can't Who's... see him. I can't see his He's boots. around the corner, basically. Like, you're, yeah. you're like, there, and he's, like, around the corner from your view. In fact, the one thing you absolutely notice from here, from the sound, is there is a sunroof. Glass roof in that main room, which is creating very interesting light because it's a glass roof in a rainstorm. But... That's a little weird, right? That's a little weird. It's My very dramatic is, lighting, for sure. And I, those servants, just... again, they, they leave after a bit. They must be preparing lunch, maybe? Something like that. Uh, do I chicken out, or do I try and get some more information? Hmm. You hear Gilwyn go, do it, do it. Do it. <laughs> You know what would have been uh, good? If before Gilwin left, he gave you inspiration. Right, so, yeah. Yeah, so, I've, I've um, yet to use one of those. It's fine. You're passively inspiring all of us all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beautiful so smile. Servants have gone back into risk, into kitchen, yeah? Mm -hmm. Kitchen is basically behind you from here. You can, are they you going can also the see quite clearly. They, they, they occasionally go into the dining room, which you can see into quite clearly. They are preparing mm -hmm. one space. And the Lord, where did the Lord go? He is not as uh, you can hear. He's not moved from the large room with the sunroof. He's in the large room. With the parrots. Sunroof and parrots. The parrots are making an awful racket. At least one of them is. Which is making the other ones make a noise. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I got a bit of cover here from the change in lighting from sunroof and from loud noise from parrots. Yep, exactly. So I need to move towards the large room and find somewhere to hide and then hide. Mm -hmm. You're not 100% sure. You would assume that there would actually be other rooms off this large room, at least a bed chamber, maybe more. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to like hide in there very quickly and dash off somewhere else, you know, as I assume is the kind of thing you want to do. I just need to hide in there till he goes for lunch. Okay. Give me the old stealth roll. Let's be good. Yes. That's good. Okay. Again, the parrots are making quite a little noise, but that doesn't seem to... If anything, that's distracting. You can dash into this room. Lovely room. Uh, there's an engraving on the floor. You can't tell what the hell it is. You're very close to the floor. Very hard to tell the whole thing. <laughs> you sort of actually almost go almost... You go like... Eh, eh, and you actually find a, a little room, which you work out is almost like a little treasure hold. Very small little room with a couple of chests on shelves and one of them is open and there's coins in it. You can see from this room quite clearly the person the, the lord a fairly large dwarven man. Older you know, older fellow uh, his his hair was black it, it, it's kind of fading to a, a muddy grey. The obvious thing of note is quite nice clothes, but not exceedingly nice. And he's missing a nose. His nose is a sort of brass replacement. Okay. Prosthetic type thing that is like actually kind of strapped on like that. Jesus. It's definitely the kind of thing you're like, what? Ugh, when you notice. <laughs> And again, you, you actually can wait in there quite easily. Uh, yeah, while I'm waiting there, I'm going to help myself to that open treasure chest. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Let me just roll something real quick. Oh, boy. Diddly, diddly, do, do. So you find in there 56 gold. It's the only one that's unlocked and you probably don't want to, to act 
actively unlock anything else here because you have no idea how old these things are, how loud they are. They look quite old. Yeah. That's like the, the, the easily grabbable money while you're watching. And in that time when you're doing that, uh, this guy is called for lunch and he, and he goes up and you actually hear him say, he, he walks with truck quite ease. He is, he's been sitting in a chair most of that time. It's clearly a chair he spends a lot of his time in. But he does, he can walk, he can move about. You can see actually when he gets up quite clearly, there is a rifle behind his chair. You haven't seen rifles yet, Vale. Gilwyn has. But you can uh, very I much see it's a... called Bickfuls. Yeah, you can absolutely uh, see... Pistols. You can absolutely see that... Oh, that's a long pistol. Cool. Um, and he sort of lumbers... He's not got the best walk. It's like a sort of unhealthy walk. But he still goes to lunch. And you actually hear... Where's, our, where's the bodyguards meant to be? They're meant to be here. They're just patrolling the... They're just patrolling the building. They do it every time before lunch. Because okay. sometimes people come in, you know... That sort they of thing. Back. Okay. Uh, okay, while they're doing that, I will quickly... First off, I'm going to take the rifle. That's going over the shoulder. Okay. You, you basically have to go all the way across the room, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, all the way across the room. Just go ahead and give me a, a, a stealth roll. I will actually give you advantage on this, though, because no one's watching you. They, they're going off hearing alone, a and they Parents, they're still parents. exactly. The parents are still making... The parents are making more noise because they can directly see you now. The parrots are making noise because you're there. The parrot passed their perception roll. Is the thing. <laughs> Oh my god. I needed advantage on that. I'm not sure it really saved you, though. It, the main issue is this rifle is a heavy, clunky thing, and you are a fast, light character. Picking it up, you definitely go, Whoo! <laughs> a little bit involuntary, because it's, it's heavy. It's quite uncomfortably heavy. You actually have to like take some part, like a, a little bit off it, to, to quite easily strap it to the, your back, like wherever your yep. your normal belts and buckles are. What else did you want to do? Next, you can hear them having lunch in the other room. Him having lunch. He's talking about study nothing. For papers. Sure. Go ahead and give me an investigation roll real quick. But uh, disadvantage because you're probably are you, are you trying to do it fast or are you taking your time? I'm doing it fast. Disadvantage. Ah uh, well. It's fine. Contingency plan is there. I already know what I'm doing when oh, I make Oh, do you? That's useful. So you're in this office. You're rustling around. You're you're going quite quickly, which the main issue being you actually left the office door open. It's one of those things as, as a thief. Do you close the doors of the room you're in? It's suspicious because did they close that door? It also makes noise. But leaving it open, you're more visible, especially if you're standing up searching a room. And this office hasn't been used as much recently which means it's quite hard to find things uh it, and you definitely notice less of an office it's more of a trophy room honestly there's a couple of uh there's actually a small head of a dragon wow above his desk not like a huge app like a it's almost the size of your head but that's yeah. still very impressive it's it's almost while you're, you're doing that and you're maybe distracted by that you hear uh, 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 a noise. A gruff, loud voice in a language I'm fairly sure you don't know. Just like, And you turn around and you see a dragonborn, red scaled, wearing oh, a breastplate. Boy. And basically everything else is almost like a trench coat. Well, you can actually see there is a... Um, he's got like a patch with uh, the panther thing on sort of hanging off his belt. And he's got a, a great sword, which he kind of actually points. Very uh, display of strength. He points at you. And you can see this this dragonborn is gnarled and, and battle-worn. And you see the fire welling in, in the mouth. Oh, boy. Uh... <laughs> Uh, where am I with regards to Sunroof right now? You are in the office, which is just, like, basically 10 feet away and then up. Okay, and is the Dragonborn in between? The Dragonborn is basically at the front door of the building. So there's a long hallway, the main room, and then your okay, office. Okay, yeah, so he can see, but he's... Right, well, uh, Dragonhead is coming off the wall. Oh, okay. Uh, and it is then being tossed with... Now... Bear this in mind. Uh, 
uh, it's being tossed with all the strength I have at the sunroof. Go ahead and give me an athletics roll. Don't mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> grab it like... <laughs> 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 crashes through not the whole sunroof it's made of square tiles the the one directly above basically you smashes at this point the dragonborn is running like zoom, zoom, zoom. you actually can hear the scraping of its claws against oh, the God, floor like the as it's running up yeah it does it does <laughs> trigger that it does trigger that like fear instinct in the brain of i'm about to be eaten by a monster because his mouth is open very quickly making me an acrobatics roll to escape. Oh boy. <laughs> and this will be against him. Ah. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, you... you... Describe how you get out of here as this guy runs out you. I'll let you do that. Yeah. So he comes out and he, he tosses, tosses, tosses the dragon head up. Smash. Looks down. Grabs a chair. chair. <laughs> <laughs> At least he grabbed a chair. <laughs> Just grabs onto the edge and, uh, uh, and then rolls out onto the onto the wet roof. You you can hear like you get onto the roof. I imagine you roll like onto your back because that's quite an awkward thing. You can hear a dragonborn in like worse common than thorax. Like alert the people outside. Uh, right. Um. Now, way off roof. <laughs> the roof, uh, basically, it, it looks like um, maybe the dumb waiter can get up here for some reason. There's like a little hatch, but other than that, there's no. Re from like a cursory glance, there's no roof let's access other than that. Then. Let's check that hatch. Okay. You, you open it up, it's definitely a little too heavy for you, but you can open it up, and basically, just a dark pit going down although there's an occasional glimpses of light in so you're like okay this is the dumb way to people who left their like hatches open there's probably one in every that's, apartment that's the dumb way to hatch rather than it doesn't actually reach up to this level it, it's not up here maybe it works a different way if, if it, you actually don't see any ropes or mechanisms so what? you have no idea um there's no like lines or anything coming coming. It's from honestly it's buildings. a little weird. Oh oh from nearby buildings. No, although there is another building the building next to this has a lower roof, and that building does have roof access. You could jump to it. Yep, no time it, to think. We jump in. Okay, acrobatics. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never doing a solo adventure again. <laughs> Perfect! You jump, the rain doesn't give you any trouble at all, and you leap, you duck, you roll onto the other building. It's one of those ones, you, you, it's probably a good thing you didn't actually notice the difference between these buildings. You probably wouldn't have been able to like power through it if you did. You roll onto this building, <laughs> And immediately, I don't even, you didn't even need to tell me, this building, you run to the roof access. This building had a bit of a, like a roof garden, which again, in dwarven terms, is statues and, and like a sundial and stuff. But you immediately rush from here down the roof access and start sprinting down. Caitlin. Yep. I was about to say, <laughs> have I, is this loud enough for me to notice? Uh, give me a perception roll. It's Gosh. very unlikely. Yeah, that's even more unlikely. What you do um, notice is the no. the yeah, I was hunters, say, are the guards, the like, poachers, are acting up right not the guards, but the poachers outside, who probably are this person's guard, right? Yeah. They actually walk around the corner and they see you there, and they are quite clearly holding their pistols. They're holding them like kind of two-handed, but they're quite clearly holding them because they were told that there's someone here and they immediately went to check if someone climbed up the building and you're standing there holding a bunch of stuff oh, i imagine shit. you've actually maybe you've like managed to stuff it in your bag by now but you still yeah. look very out of place because you're expecting Vale to climb back down exactly where he was which honestly was never gonna happen 
So these two turn and, and point to you, and in Dwarven, well, actually it would be in common, it's like, stop right there. What, no, it's like women, but you know, one of them has a very deep voice. Stop right there, what are you doing? Ah, I'm just waiting for my friend. He was, um, he was in one of the, um, nearby buildings. I point away from the, uh, penthouse. Okay. But I, I would, but I, I, I would deliberately leave it vague. Deception roll, my friend. Can Caitlin lie? Well, this is the question. The problem was, I originally planned, if this had been a different situation, then... Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, Caitlin cannot lie! Uh. You're carrying a lot of stuff there. They're like, at this point, they walk up to you, and they're doing, like, the thug walk. Like, you know, like, yeah, we're bigger than you. Well, even though they're shorter. But they're bigger I, than you. We're clearly, like, in the power here, you know? I, I just right, put a behind. hand on the just, wall, just keep on stalling side, them. I'll and I'd be like, well, yes, I'm a strong woman. Intimidation roll, come on. <laughs> Do it. A bit more intimidating. You than are I a bit like. more intimidating. One of them sort of like actually puts their hand on the other one's shoulder, and they look and, and they kind of like have a little bit of a silent conversation. Maybe it's eyebrow based. You don't know. And they do look, and like just stay there. Stay there. Stay. And they're like actually walking backwards. And like again, they're like stay before they like go out of view. Do you stay there? I assume you don't. No, I do not stay there. Let me just. Um, I want to. I, I want to um, move slowly in the direction they're from. I don't want to move so far forward that they would notice me if they were like round the corner. Okay. I want to sort of have a look and see if then anyone's nearby. Sure. When you go like at near the front of this building, you actually see running out of the front is this dragonborn person who is. So tall compared to everyone else here. He's taller than you, and you're actually like fairly reasonable height, right? Well, He's taller I'm than Gilwyn, human, who's but, uh, yeah, uh, 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 in Dwarven uh, uh, City. In, in Dwarven City, yeah, I'm yeah. reasonable height. This guy's tall, and he like stops and sniffs at the air. And like, again, he's hot got his great sword, but he's just been holding it one hand in this entire time, just ready to use it. And like, and uh, the the poachers are like, well. I can't believe you lost a thief. And he's like, he's like, oh, he's like dra draconic grumbling. I would start, um, I would be try, I wouldn't, I would try not to make it obvious, but I would walk sort of nonchalantly away from the building, just like, in so not not like actually trying to stealth as such, but just like, I'm, I have no part of this. I was just in the area sort of thing. Give me a deception roll for that. That I'm is slightly a slightly better than my stealth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's like I fly casual. And kind I of thing. still can't roll decently. <laughs> All right, let me just roll some things over here. <laughs> so in a row there, roll. that's a four, a, a three, a two. You <laughs> smell like elf. Groof, 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 looking down. At you, I imagine Ed. you don't immediately run away from him. <laughs> Sky's Ollie. big. Oh, yeah. You just cut out like. I'm back. You, sh you just went. You just went. You smell. <laughs> <laughs> you smell. <laughs> I love it. Uh, he goes. You smell like elf, huh? And and stops kind of in front of you. Much less aggressive than he was with um, Vale because he isn't sure, and you can actually you can tell like you can see like the nostrils flaring, like smelling at you. I would I would just look up at him and and quite and quite innocently just be like, oh yes, I I spend a lot of time in the Elven lands, and I would actually say give him a traditional Elvish greeting as well, just because. Give me a, give me a perception roll for you know diffusing the dragon in front of you. Or persuasion, you mean not per perception, I assume. Yes. <laughs> Look, if people well, roll the wrong one all the time, I can say the wrong one. You say that, yes. and this guy gives a little more time. And, and in fact, the women behind uh, are like, oh, maybe that, that makes sense. And he kind of looks at them and looks back. And he's like, I'll remember your scent. Don't come back here. And he like 
actually leaves and doesn't go back to the courtyard. He starts sort of prowling around, probably looking for Vale. Maybe he worked out that he leapt off the building. Who knows? Vale. I would, yeah. At this uh, I just, point, I would start wandering away, heading back to the different direction of the tavern. Okay. Probably. Vale. At this point, you can make it to the courtyard of this building. The, um, it's definitely one of the ones where actually you, you can tell when you get to the bottom there is a uh, caretaker at the door. Are you just gonna leave? And, and raise questions, or are you going to, like, sneak, or, or what? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to walk past him, like I'm leaving, normally, like I was in there. Okay. See you. Good day. <laughs> Give me a deception roll, but with advantage, because this guy's going to be so confused. <laughs> so confused. Uh, deception, deception, deception. Oh, no. I, uh, I, uh, good day, uh... <laughs> wait wait a minute by, by the time he does that you're like halfway across the courtyard and I imagine you don't wait you just keep going just speed up speed up into the smog and the rain okay real quick let me just do something for no reason at all okay while you're leaving uh Give me a perception roll, Veil. But you, you just walk again. You're like It's a kind of like fast walk, but quite casually. Like, I've got places to be. <laughs> Damn it. You're going off into the fog. You don't manage to find Caitlyn. I actually, do you actually go back to try and look for her? Or, or do you just like beeline it out of here? No, I'm going to go look for her because that's what you would do. You, you go back there. You don't see her there. You don't see your stuff so he there. Would be on. he would be on guard. Yeah, yeah. Alert. You're definitely keeping a look the whole time. You make a wide berth of the whole courtyards. You, she's not there. Fuck. Uh, I guess I'll go back to where we split up first. Okay. Uh, then if I can't find Caitlin from there, I will follow the direction Gilwyn went. Go ahead and give me a perception roll. Uh, you actually, when you go down there, you can see Caitlyn. She's walking down a stairwell further down the city. It's almost like you see through like a, a, a break in the, the smog. You can actually see her. She's just, she's leaving, although you can tell from the way she's moving. She's not like leaving casually. She's not being followed. But you know how it is, like prompted to leave. Yeah. Not like she just abandoned you. She no, can easily hurry find up. her and catch up to catch her. Up, then. Yep. You catch up. <clears throat> well, uh, things didn't go exactly as planned. Vale very uh, clearly has a rifle on his back. They could have gone a lot worse. Ah, Vale, yes. Um, well, I, I gathered that. Um, did you have an encounter with a dragonborn chap as well? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, charming fellow. Maybe, Quite. Uh, he, he said he would remember my scent, which is not something I'd expect from someone I'd meet for the first time. I was going to say, that's a bit of a weird thing to say on the first date. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I it is pack. flattering, pack. maybe. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah, thank you. And the bow? Yes, certainly. Oh, oh this rifle is heavy. Uh, do you want me to carry that? No, I, I think I am happy with it for now. Certainly. Um... It gives you a little grin. <laughs> it appears to be. It appears to be some form. Of, well, I suppose I wouldn't actually have called it a rifle. I'd have been like, "This thing is heavy." It appears to be some form of pistol, but uh, I'm not sure how it works in comparison to the smaller ones yet. Uh, I'm quite is... excited to find out. It is quite a long pistol. Do you think they're compensating for something? Speaking of which, we should go find Gilwin before he gets into any trouble. Ah, yes, yes. I was going to make my way back to the tavern, but... Um... <laughs> I'm sure he would be fine, but, you know, probably best not to leave him on his own for that long. Okay, you, both of you give me investigation rolls. Gilwin! Smash cut to Gilwin plowing into, like, a dwarven hog. I was going to say, <laughs> do you or don't you? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. How much is that going to be? Okay, and, uh, relieve Actually, yourself of a gold or two. And, depending uh, how much and a couple you of other things relieve yourself of as well. <laughs> Actually, Gilwin I, I has would, needs. I would, I would pay for a whore, or whatever the equivalent word would be. 
but I, w I would just talk to them. You're that guy. You just kind of <laughs> want to cuddle and talk? Yeah, absolutely. You're going to sing them your song. Oh, uh, okay. Have you heard of Gilbert? <laughs> so you're wandering they, around. They, it's, it's definitely that kind of thing where you, you start going into the, the city where you saw him leave, and very quickly guards are like, what are you doing here? And you just kind of turn back around like... <laughs> He'll be fine, right? You go back away at the tavern, and then, not actually a whole lot later by the time you get back, Gilwin gets back. Looks fine. Doesn't look beat bloody or beaten up. Uh, you can clearly tell that Vale has this uh, rifle. I mean, you know that you don't know they're called rivals, but you've seen them before on um, the, I mean, actually, the poachers. I would wrap that up in my bedroll. Okay, great. You, he has a suspicious package. <laughs> ah, so Gilwen, um, which I already okay. had. Now I have another one on my. <laughs> Way. So Gilwen, you seem you seem fine. I'm glad. Darling, <sighs> what happened? Well, I uh, I got the guard's attention, as you can probably know, since we're all back here safely. Yes, that uh, worked pretty well. I tried to pretend to be someone I'm not. Um, and he saw through my lies and thought I was somebody I'm not. So it's all worked out. Caitlin immediately, immediately <laughs> saw him, he's like, uh, with a sort of sympathetic look on her face. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I had to lie and say I was looking for a brothel. So that was my afternoon. Eyebrow goes up. Did you find a decent one at least? It was a very nice place. Oh no. I died. <laughs> it was a very nice place. It's the kind of place where you had like a free fruit platter, platter which, you know, yeah. honestly, probably worth the admission price. They had a nice pair as well. <laughs> Throw <laughs> back. <laughs> Throw back. I uh, noticed the... Is it on the table in the bedroll? Or is it elsewhere? Yeah, I mean, it's probably with my backpack. Like, okay. by the side, like of, the the side table, of the yeah. chair. Did we... Did we get anything good? We uh, got a few things. I uh, managed to find a couple of coins. Uh, along with our extended pistol friend over here. I would have found some form of paper with notes on, but a large dragonborn interrupted me, so to speak. Ah, uh, okay. So that's a, a pistol, is it? Yes, it appears to be some form of extended pistol. I mean, I don't really want to get it out here, but perhaps I'll show you it in the room later, yes? Yeah, yes. I bet mine's bigger. Well, we can compare. <laughs> boys will be boys. <laughs> uh, Kaden will just be watching this with an amused smirk. She's not. <laughs> she's not bothered by this. <laughs> Good. She's blushing. She's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Go to your room. So <laughs> you're both were safely. But you said a dragonborn interrupted you. Yes. He tried to spray fire on me, but I jumped out the roof. Wow. He seemed rather <laughs> interested in my scent, but um. Other than that, he mostly left me alone. I don't the think it would be a good idea to go back there, though. It's not all that. He said yes. He said, I will remember your scent. Wasn't well, yes. it? So, yes. he might That's remember nice. Kathleen if we go and poke around again. And I imagine, did he, he? you say he actually saw you? Oh, yes. There was a moment where we, we... I looked up from my looting of the desk, and he was there, and I went, clever boy. And then I, and then well, I don't want to regale you with the tale of my expertise, but there was a dragon head on the wall, yes? I grab it, and I throw it at the roof. And you think, why is he throwing it at the roof? But actually, there is a sunroof. And a glass, it showers down upon me, and I place a comfy, very nice chair at my feet, and I leap, and, and the dragonborn leaps, but I leap higher and I make it to the roof, and I pull myself up. And as I go, I say, better awesome. luck next time, lizard. And I tip my non-existent hat, and I leap from building to building. Oh, what's uh, the long story? What's the long version of that story? Well, <laughs> several hours later. There was a very, <laughs> a very, a very comely dwarven serving girl there, you see. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. No, there is no long story. I, I told you mostly. mostly. He had a, a dragon's head or a dragonborn head, because we need to make that distinction. Uh, a dragon's head, because the uh, dragon ball, you know, it has stars in it. it, it you gather that many of them together, Wait. And you make a wish. Stop. <laughs> Bad joke. <laughs> You're, you're you're like so high on the bad joke quota right now, okay? Uh, no, it was a small dragon's head. It was not that impressive. We could have done the same. Uh, are we never... actually are we concerned with this dragonborn snout? Because we do know a guy who could make you smell several different ways. I I do not think it will be a worry if we don't if um. If we don't go there again, as long as I mean he, he is quite distinctive, so I can always turn down an alley if I see him coming. Okay. But what I would recommend. Didn't... No, would sorry, be, I, just... uh... well, I don't think he suspected me of anything untoward, so I think Vale should be the one who's on lookout more. He does stand out quite a lot in this city. I stand out quite a lot wherever I go. It is the handsome face. <laughs> well, but that is true. But... What I was going to say is perhaps you should have a bath so that he cannot recognize your scent. Well, after being out in the rain for so long waiting, I certainly could do with one. Miss Tavern does not I. have baths. As could I, you see. He may also have picked up my scent. In which case, we need to bathe. Is this a bathing episode now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would go across to the um, barkeep and ask, is there like, is there a public bath or the something? The short answer is yes, you can go to a bathhouse. Yeah, uh, right, we can skip through that then. Yeah, we you spend, I imagine you spend like, probably it'll be like two silver. You'll bathe up. I don't know if Gilwyn, does Gilwyn end up enjoying, uh, you know, it's actually quite a, a, a nice time. It's definitely not a dwarven thing, but maybe there are hot springs nearby because the water is so nice right now. Gilwyn's like, I like the smell of my balls. <laughs> The water like is them. so nice! I like them musky. Just real quick, uh, is it like a uh, a split gender bathhouse, or would would I see Caitlyn it, at any It's point? split gender. Okay. Damn! <laughs> In a radia? Yeah, so, around about, it'd be about, about the evening, what do, you, what, do you, what do you aim to do? What do you continue doing? You come back uh, to the tavern after all that, like, nice and fresh. Scent cleaned out. The rain actually is mostly stopped, so you don't get rained on when you leave the bathhouse, which would suck. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna order a glass of wine and suggest we go and have a look at this rifle. Sure. This extended pistol. So you can all spend a couple of uh, coin on some money, at, on some uh, drink, and probably you want some food, right? So uh, end up spending a, uh, like two silver on, on some simple food. And also rooms, rooms for the night. So. Oh, actually. They've been buying their rooms, but I'll find the price. I'll get um, the food and drink. Great. For these two. Oh. Uh, your The rooms here, they were um, five silver. Your food is like three silver each. So, yeah. Okay. I've Great. Sold, yeah. So, you can go to your, uh, your room and uh, you actually go to... Uh, um, Vale's because Vale's room is actually slightly bigger because he's one of the last people to sort of claim a room here. Weirdly enough. Uh, and that's how they work here. If you're here earliest, you get the shit's rooms. Yeah. Hey, dwarven logic. So you that can you can all quite comfortably sit there and uh, unveil the rifle. Now Gilwyn, give me a perception roll. Perception, yeah? Yes. Making sure I'm not on their uh, advantage. Well, it's bigger than yours. It, it, it <laughs> looks a little different to the ones you saw at the Panther Way Trapping Company, but how are you going to be able to tell the different... Like, you only saw those in glimpses. It does look a little different, but really... It doesn't really give you much. It is a... Yeah. Uh, thing made of wood and mostly metal. It's not all that ornate. It's not as ornate as the one Valvorian showed you, which had some engraving on it. This is basic. This is like the basic version of a, of a, of a rifle. Like maybe a prototype, maybe a first... one of the firsts. And this was just lying where in this room? 
he had it behind his desk uh, on a sort of trophy rack, if you will. Oh. It was behind his chair, actually. Why would you have random chair with no desk? This was the chair he sits in all the time. Yeah, yeah. the one that I used to to, to leap. From. Yeah, oh, was that the one? Ah, oh. it's gonna have to, have to get his butt print back in there after you stood on it. Anyway, how heavy is it? It's pretty heavy. Have a feel. I could get you the actual weight. Yeah, I'll I'll go up to him and try and pick it up. You you can pick it up. It's just you know it's heavier than you think. I imagine Gil struggles to pick it up, and then Caitlyn goes across and like takes it off with one hand. Yeah, <laughs> no trouble for old Caitlyn. So, huh? <laughs> so this one is around about twelve pounds heavy. Not the lightest thing in the world. Not the heaviest thing in the world. Heavier than some other stuff. Yeah, that for Gil is like noticeably uncomfortable. Exactly. It would it would have been for Vale as well. Why he needed a bath? Because his back's like all achy, achy breaky. Why I needed you to get get my butt back for me? Because I can I couldn't reach reach round, and you had to give it a good old rub with the hot water, not not with anything else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you looking at this? What are you uh, aiming to find? Well, I thought we best just have a look at it. Um, in terms of our employment. Uh, presumably our employer would be interested in this yes i mean he he uh, it's one of those things anything you can get him is good um if you bring him a, a working rifle that's great ideally plans and who's making it is more important than the actual rifle and you're like mm -hmm. eh, on that that's more important uh, all of you go ahead and give me a quick perception roll. Actually, investigation roll. You're doing an L.A. Noir. You're, like, holding it up in different angles. <laughs> Gilwin, you quite clearly see a seal on it, a, a forge's seal. You don't know which forge that is. But basically, almost everything, almost anywhere, is going to have tiny, tiny little, almost, like, millimeter big little stamp that are put into every uh, creation to prove what they are. So, so now we know the forge. You know which forge made it if you can find out what that seal belongs to. It's one of those ones so small that you, you need actually a micro uh, a magnifying glass to really look at it, but you're like, okay, there's something there. Okay, cool. It's actually on uh, the inside of the, the handle. Uh, I'm gonna properly wrap it now. Um, cool. So, uh, Unroll my bedroll fully and, and properly wrap it in the bedroll. Sure. Attach it to the backpack. Are we sure this is totally unloaded then? There's none of that crazy powder in it. Yeah, it's unloaded. It didn't have any fire powder in it or on it or anything. Okay. It looks like it's been fired before. But Indeed. it's not currently loaded. Which So you're not packing it up in a bed thing and then like, shoot yourself in the face. No, 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 no. So, we've got something for him. I suggest we go and visit this forge. Perhaps there is a guild charter somewhere that would tell us whose forge's seal this is. Yes, or, or the city records or something to that effect. The, I yes. don't know much about Dwarven society, but I imagine they're, they probably keep these things quite well organized. Something to do with licensing to trade. Perhaps if we uh, if we ask the barkeep tonight, uh, he may know something, and if not, we will try again tomorrow. Uh, I wouldn't suggest going there tonight. We uh, we will probably need a rest. I know I do after all the climbing and jumping I did today. But uh, Gilwin also probably needs a rest after all the activities he got up to. Climbing, oh, jumping. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that sounds like a good idea. All right, sleep. Unlike last night, nothing weird happens in your sleep. Could I talk to Caitlin real quick? Okay, yeah. before night time, uh, I imagine you leave Vale's room just as he's sort of like uh, preparing himself on the bed to yeah, I mean, not sleep. Once once those guys go, I'm actually going to go have a play with the rifle for a bit. And okay. I'll like aim it up like you would a crossbow and have a little... <laughs> okay, uh, sure. You, you get a little... 
you absolutely, it's one of those things where it, it's unwieldy for you because it is heavy, but yeah. you're like, even you know, the first time you make anything, and this is clearly one of the firsts, it's not going to be as streamlined. Maybe a proper one would be wieldable for you, especially a smaller one. And it's, you, you can understand it, you know, like simple. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of, I wanted to get to grip with how the aiming on it worked so that if when the time comes, we inevitably end up fighting people armed with them. Mm -hmm. If I ever got my hands on one, yeah, I could just fire it in their face. Yes, you, you absolutely understand how, how you actually uh, click the triggers and, and see the internal mechanisms working a little bit, that kind of thing. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Gil and Caitlin go to one of their rooms. Really? Really quickly, is there, is anyone else's Twitch is just dead? No. Uh, I I it's just still yours. working for me. You're dead. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to check. Hey, it's, it's Twitch. Nice Twitch. It never Twitch works. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'll I'll uh, sit down with Caitlin. Is it night time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, can I ask you a couple of questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. What do you do? Or what did you do? Uh, I worked on jobs for House of Gast. There, all, all kinds of things, but it was mostly the fairly dull jobs like rat extermination, bodyguard duty, nothing particularly fancy. I didn't have a. I uh, no, I didn't have a. a, a job as such. I was just an irregular employee, I suppose you would say. You seem to be... Forgive me if I'm wrong, you seem to be of a woman of the faith, at least in a slight regard. I would actually I would actually laugh a little bit at that. Um, I'm not sure I'd take it that, take it that far. I do have... Um, I, I don't... I don't disbelieve, but I am not a particularly. I do not particularly follow many of the rituals and and such like. It's, but um, I'm knowledgeable about it. Yes, perhaps, but but not a, not in a, a active practice. Um, I have not. I, I know a lot about the Elven Pantheon in particular, but I haven't chosen one uh, one elven a uh, member of the elven pantheon to dedicate myself to or anything yet i'm more i'm more interested in the elven people in the city itself than um than the religion if if that makes sense would you would you say that you these um elven gods whatever you would call them would they all vehemently disagree with, you know, the typical sort of human undead stuff? Oh. Undead, Skeletons, um, etc. That depends d depends a lot on which which god it is. I believe it is um Saloon is particularly uh anti and undead. She has her followers um hunt down undead. The rest of the elven gods I Probably a, a bit more lenient. I don't think I, I don't think you'll find many gods who are in favour of the undead exactly. At least none of the good gods. But I think that the other elven gods would be a bit more would be a bit more. Um, they don't they don't care as such. They regard they only they have their own specific niches. But um, uh, Saloon Seldurin, I can't. Yes, she would. Um, she particularly has a hunt, has her followers hunt them down specifically. I know that much. But there's there's nothing. I don't particularly hold any of those beliefs, but uh, uh, not especially. But um, is there a reason why you ask? We haven't encountered any undead yet, have we? No, it's just I kind of wanted to get to know you all a little bit better. Me and Farah had a little heart to heart. I still need to do one with Vale. Oh, that's. I, I'm quite happy to talk to talk with you about anything we can talk into the night if you want. Um, oh, but... <laughs> So you would you wouldn't align yourself with the belief that the undead are uh, an unholy scourge upon the earth? Well, I can't say I ever met. Uh, undead. I mean, most undead seem pretty. Uh, from from sort of the rumours, the tales, they're pretty mindless, aren't they? If they if they had no mind and were just bent on destruction, 
then by all means they would need to be um, taken out for the for the sake of um, for the sake of um, of of uh, civilized races. But I mean, I, I suppose un being undead itself is not a crime. If you could show me an undead who was working for the best of people and wasn't hurting anyone, I wouldn't have any particular problem with them. Probably. I mean, possibly I might I might find find it a little uncomfortable. I won't deny that, but... Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's all. I, I just wanted to ask what you did, basically. Ah, sure. Um, can I ask the same of you in turn? You spent... You, you, how did you come to work for um, Lord Agast? Well, um... Growing up in Goldport, I sort of... I should be used to manual labour. I should be stronger than I am. But thankfully, my parents were, as I am, a, a very talented performer. And so I sort of got away with not picking up a shovel or an axe. Um, and so, as you... Henry Gallagher, my, my father, you, you probably know that he's of some importance, of some renown. Uh, and it was basically, to cut a long story short, uh, we parted shortly after I went out on a little tour with him. I was supposed to travel around with him, but I decided it was time for me to go my own way and work for my own gold. Uh, an admir admirable goal, to be sure. Um, I mean, I can't say I... I... I knew a great deal about about um, your father, just his name in passing. But um, he seemed he seems quite well known. It must be difficult to be in his in a shadow life. I I must I must um, apologise. I I I feel some pity for you to some extent. I know that isn't very pleasant. But my own family was so kind and caring that it's difficult to imagine being in the shadow of your father so much. Yeah. I, um... He certainly let me know that I was in his shadow. Oh, he, so he wasn't even pleasant about it. That's even, that's even worse. I, I, I put my hand on, um, I don't know, it, I, I don't know how exactly we're sitting, but probably like a knee or a knee or an arm nearby, just like comforting. He wasn't cruel. He didn't rub my face in it, but he reminded me that I had a lot to live up to. Uh, as did the people of Gulfport. That's. Yes, that that must be difficult. Uh, my my own family never dictated a path for me. Um, I'm so I'm glad your family was much lovelier than mine. <laughs> yes, I mean maybe you'll get to meet them someday. We're travelling, they're they're travelling. Maybe we'll run into one another. But um, no, I, I don't know. I don't really know what to say in this situation. It's so outside of my experience. Just if you need to talk about any detail or anything like that just know that I'm here for you thank you Caitlin, I appreciate that and with that why don't we take our second break, you guys can plan what you're planning to do tomorrow plan it plan <laughs> well you give us longer break then you want us to plan Mr Ollie? I oh, will because I really want some chocolate <laughs> and I'm greedy so we'll be back in a little bit, a little bit longer this time. We'll see you later. Woo.